Okay, Biggs, I've got one major question for you this episode. Okay. You ready for this one? It's going to be a real head scratcher. You're going to be on the edge of your seat. Well, You're going to be thinking, well, I don't want to expose the answer to this to anybody on God's green flat earth. But alas, and no, I'm not talking about what you want to stick your dick in by saying alas, Biggs. The wow. The question Third of the day. One. To quote the trailer for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, isn't that the question of the day? Are you ready for this one, Biggs? Okay, go for it. Okay. I'm in intrigued. This is the question. Could I get two scratches from my homeboy Jesus? What? What? Get better give him one more dance. Now, baby, slide on the pool, baby, dance. Now, baby, show me who you're working for, dance. Slide down that pole. Can I get two scratches for my homeboy Jesus? Better give him one more. Dance. Baby, slide down that pole. Baby, dance. Oh, baby, show me who you're working for. Dance. Baby, slide down that pole. Now, nah, stop. Now, what brought you to wanting to use this as the uh, the opening for the show? You see, a lot of people they have they have a song on their hearts. Not to not to get confused with Neil Morris, who has heaven in his heart. But it, I was born a musically talented man, always wanting to sing. And the song of my heart, of course, is is what the fuck is his name? Cool. <laughs> Nacho Nacho the Cross Eyed Nacho Cat. the Cross Eyed Cat at Cool Court. Singing a rap song about his homeboy Jesus, you know, cleaning up corn and dust off the floor with your big fat titties. You can't forget the roaches. Now bend over, girl, and use your titties like a broom and sweep it. Just sweep it. There's a roach on the floor and some dust and some corn. Now sweep it up. Just sweep it up. There's there's a roach on the floor and some dust and some corn. Just sweep it. That that is the song that is on my heart. What is the song that is on your heart that inspires you to wake up every morning and sing? I I would have to say it's my two lovely uncles. Uh, can we hear you belt that one out? Uh, I'm not wearing a belt right now. Can I get two scratches from my lovely uncles? <laughs> waka waka. Better give them one more. Should we contact them and see if they'll do a, uh, a, a collaboration? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Super Mega does, wants nothing to do with us, especially you. After all those rumors about you got out there, I don't think they would want to what, what uh, associate their brand with Biggs. What rumors of me got out? Well, we all know... What you did to Heartsey at the Christmas party with that embarrassing photo. Uh, <laughs> Is that Spongebob lore that Spongebob did something embarrassing at the Christmas party? Or was it Patrick? Do you remember this? I don't. Is this oh. is that from the episode of The Box? It, it might he's got be. like the box with a string in it. <laughs> he's like, I want to see what's in the box. And he, like, the embarrassing like, photo is Spongebob at the Christmas party! Is yeah. That's you with Heartsy. What did you and Heartsy do at the Christmas party that would make Super Mega not want to collab with you on a Nacho the Cross-Eyed Cat slash Two Lovely Uncles collaboration picks? What could you have possibly done? Um, I think it was when we both called the Suicide Hotline <laughs> and sung both songs collectively to the person talking to us. And when they answered, they said, hello, welcome to the suicide hotline. Can I take your order? And you said, can I get two scratches from my homeboy, Jesus? What, what? Better give him one more. And then you said, dance. And then the, the, the suicide hotline operator started sliding on the pole. And you were like, slide on the pole, baby, dance. And then Harty was like, show me who you're working for. He's more like, show me who you were going <laughs> to Is that what happened? Is that what Heartsy sounds like? I mean, you interpreted it that way. I didn't oh, say I that did? was Heartsy. I just did a retard voice and you assumed it was Heartsy. But you st you literally said in now the Now baby slide on like that pole, baby dance. Now baby show. So how was your 4th of July, Biggs? Um, did it, you slide on that pole? It was all right. Okay. Uh, I went to a cookout and sat in a lawn chair for... You went to the, the southern fast food restaurant about, known as Cookout? No. That's a good place. Actually, I did go there while I was in Georgia. What'd you get? What'd you get at Cookout? Because I... Of I all got, the things I miss in, in South America, and by that I mean the south of the United States, uh, Cookout is definitely number one other than... I got uh, one of their combo boxes. It came with like a burger and 
uh, nuggets and fries and something else, and it was really good, actually. I and wanted cheap. to go more. Yeah. If I could bring anything from the South up here, it would be cookout and Bojangles, mostly because there's eh. no Popeyes in town. Bojangles kind of sucked for me. When I was at Rusty's in Florida for 4th of July, I did get uh, uh, Uber Eats Bojangles, and I thought, eh, this chicken's okay, but the sides, complete fucking dog shit. Popeyes oh, yeah. for the win. Yeah, the, the sides at Bojangles really had me uh, wanting to puke. I You wanted to puke? What'd you get, the mac and cheese? Because that was bad. It was mac and cheese, that was uh, mashed horrible. potatoes. We got the, the rice, the Cajun rice or whatever, and then like the beans. You got four sides? Would you get a whole family meal for you? Uh, it was me, my brother, Cobb, and his GF. So, so, got, so like, what did they, they eat while you ate your family meal? <laughs> uh, something else. Now, Bojangles does have that good sweet tea, but then again, everybody has good sweet tea. So let's cross that one off the list. Uh, welcome back to the fast food tier list. Today we're going to figure out what's the best fried chicken restaurant. Popeye's uh, Popeyes wins. Popeye's is number one. And uh, KFC is at the bottom of the list, I assume. Oh, yeah. KFC is god awful. Even their their quote unquote new crispy chicken is awful. Uh, when did you try that? I have not tried it. Uh, like a month or two ago, I would say. Like. I usually love going to, to Popeye's instead of KFC, but for whatever reason they wanted to get KFC. So I went and we ordered a bucket of their crispy instead of their original. Because apparently their original, they finally agreed, isn't crispy. <laughs> so we got their crispy bucket and it was still soggy as all hell. Yeah. And I was just not impressed. About as soggy as a Popeye's chicken sandwich, I you know what say, I'm saying? I will say the only thing that I genuinely like at KFC and I would go there for like if somebody wanted me to go there I would go and probably just get that from now on. What the customer it's service? The famous bowls. Oh okay. The famous bowls are really good. Well you just shit a bunch of mashed potatoes, corn and pieces of chicken into a bowl. We can yeah. make that at home. Bro, and they also have uh the mac and cheese famous bowls. What? Those are amazing. The mac and cheese at KFC is better than at Bojangles, is what you're trying to say. Yes. Okay, I gotta try that then. I've never had it. Is that Literally, Snack Testers it's a, episode a 6? a bowl of mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, corn, and chicken, like, all in one. Amazing. Anything else on the menu? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Horrid. I... I come to the conclusion that I'm not willingly going to go there anymore <laughs> unless But what I about famous this famous bowl? bowl? Yeah, let's go get this mac and cheese. Yeah, but I'm not going to willingly go there myself. If somebody wants to go, I'll say, sure, we can go and I'll get that. But I'm not going to be yeah. like, hey, you guys want to go to KFC? No. Why would I go there when Popeye's is down the street? Well, if you're talking about down the street names, there is no. no yeah. <laughs> I, I sent... I mean, it's pizza Ranch is our only hope here. Here's the thing. The only fried chicken available in Ames is either Walmart, which is... You don't want to eat that. hy V, which, I mean, I guess that's your best bet, but still, I'd rather have Popeyes. And then there's a buffet called Pizza Ranch. You know that when the the best fast food slash uh, buffet fried chicken you can get is, a, is at a place that is called Pizza Ranch? <laughs> Like, they're clearly not too yeah. confident about their chicken. To be honest, the, it should be called Chicken Ranch, because their pizza is subpar and not the best anyway. Everything they have is subpar. It is the shitty Chinese buffet of American cuisine. But I did send Popeyes a message on Twitter, and I said, Yo, Popeyes, check this out. Billion dollar idea. I'm about to hook you guys the fuck up. I live in Ames, Iowa. There's a fried chicken drought. As far as the eye can see, it's just dog shit food. There's no fried chicken anywhere. All we can do is eat at goddamn Walmart. If you guys built a Popeye's chicken and biscuits here in town, people would flock to you like Biggs to an hourglass. Why do you flock to an hourglass, Biggs? Well, you know, it's just like the preferred figure. Oh, you mean like an hourglass figure of a man? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I told him, hey, if you build a Popeyes, you know, you build it, they will come. You'll make so much money in Ames. Popeyes replied to me. They said, cool. We'll look into it, bro. I'm, I might be paraphrasing a bit. It was along those lines. I hope this is real. Oh, uh, do you want me to show it to you? Yes, you think actually. You think I'm kidding? Yeah. <laughs> this really happened. But th my point is this happened months ago. 
they still have not built a Popeyes. I think they were just uh, blowing steam up my ass. And yesterday I sent them a follow-up message saying, hey, so uh, any any update on this? No reply. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Uh, Please open a store in Ames. This is one of the most populated cities in the state and there are zero fried chicken restaurants. You would have no competition and people would flock to you daily. Please pass this on to the higher ups, thanks. They said, thank you for your suggestion. We can certainly forward it to the team. Pro provide us your full name, phone number, and email address. That was kind of creepy. So I hooked them up. They pass it on. I say, thanks Popeyes. They say, you're welcome. <laughs> and then that's it. No update since then. Complete ripoff. That was all the way back in uh, April. So, still no fried chicken. Well, if you drive around town and see any uh, sold signs on some land and some building processes, then maybe... Do you think we should open a franchise of Popeyes here? We could quit YouTube forever and just run a chicken uh, restaurant? Um, You're a chef, Biggs. You could do it. I, I don't know if, I, if I'd if i want to manage a fast food place like that. Uh it seems like dreadful, dreadful work. But what if we style it like a Los Pollos Hermanos and you just act like Gus for the rest of your life? That would be... Is that not a dream? That would be great. So just pretend to be nice to people all day and then secretly have like a drug... Okay, okay. ...crime syndicate. In Alexa, the how much does it cost to franchise a Popeye's restaurant? Fifty thousand. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So about half a million. So. Shut up, Alexa. Shut the fuck up. Shut up, Alexa. Shut up. Shut up. No. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. She's she's thinking about it. She's really thinking about it. Shut up. Okay. She's done. <laughs> So about half a million. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do, Biggs. I think the the pockets of the Mumkey and Biggs podcast fan base are so deep. We're gonna do a Kickstarter campaign right now. Half a million dollars. If we hit this goal, not only will we quit this podcast and abandon the internet entirely, but we will open up a Popeyes and Ames. This is your opportunity to be set free. Your souls will no longer be tormented by Monkey and Biggs and all of our shitty content. If we raise this money, you will never hear from us again. I think that is a, a good deal for everybody involved, <laughs> especially the people of Ames. Is they this, could really use the fried chicken. Is this the part where we pretend to care and say, oh, and if we double that, then we'll fly one of you lucky people out to come eat our chicken. If we make a million dollars on the Popeye's <laughs> franchise <laughs> we'll, Kickstarter, we'll, we'll fly, fly somebody one, out? One person. <laughs> but, they, but they have to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, they have to pay for their meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have to pay for their own flight. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and we'll give them... We'll allow you to fly yourself out here. Yeah, no, if they fly out and they want to, like, get a hotel, I will give them a free meal at Popeye's, but only... You have to donate at least $1,000 to the Kickstarter, and then we will randomly draw one name from the people who donated that much, and you'll get a free meal at Popeye's. If you guys think that's a good deal, let us know in the comments section. We will, uh... Should we do GoFundMe or Kickstarter? That's a tough one. Or should we just set up a PayPal and tell them to send it directly to <laughs> PayPal? Yeah, at at Mumkey Kong, M U M K E Y K O N G, at gmail.com. Send your PayPal money to that and we will open up this Popeyes. Well, because Kickstarter and GoFundMe, they take such a huge portion. Like, I think it's like 20%. You don't think Elon Musk is stealing my, Patri or my, uh, my PayPal money? He steals that money all the time. Yeah, I'm sure they'll take a percentage when you... Tr well, no, I think transfers are, are free, probably. Transfers? But is? here's the thing. All the money that gets transferred or sent to us through PayPal is already getting... Um, there's like a PayPal fee in that. So they're already making money off of all of it that comes in anyways. So that's why the bank transfers are free to send it to your bank. The real question is... How long will it take an individual Popeye's restaurant to make half a million dollars to make the investment worth it? <sighs> Here? Probably not super long, I would say. Well, like 10 years? I mean, as opposed to like 20. You had to pay employees. The average, uh, like, fast food place around here is paying like 13 bucks an hour that's a little high i think we should maybe do Man, like we, we should do we should do if you work at our popeyes 
You get a free employee <laughs> meal. You get three twenty-five an hour plus tip, but the problem is nobody tips at Popeyes, so really you're basically working for free. I think that's the deal we can make with our employees. You just set it at a low bar, like ten bucks. You say we'll ten bucks. That's a little high, to be honest. We'll give you free employee meals. You know, you can drink the drinks from the the fountain if you donate to the Kickstarter. <laughs> The employees have to donate a thousand to the <laughs> yeah. Kickstarter. You don't think that Hartsey would pay for the opportunity to work at our fast food restaurant? He'd be paying us by the hour to work for us. He's uh, a big fan. I mean, I guess. We'll see. And every hour on the hour at our restaurant, we will blare over the loudspeakers. Could I get two scratches from my homeboy, Jesus? And everybody in the restaurant, even the customers, they have to get up and do like the, the titty sweeping dance. And if they don't do it, they get kicked out of the store and they're banned for life. You know, this joke would have been a lot It's not a joke. If you think I'm fucking joking? At the end of the show. You think I'm joking? Because then it would tie the opening and ending together. Well, and it's like a neat little gift for our viewers. I think we're... Well, I think now it's, you've just ruined the joke. So if you do it again, it's just not funny. No, I, I wanted to end this segment anyway so we could talk about my trip to Rusty's. So, I just, everybody... That's boring, though. Boring? We're talking about Popeyes. True. Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> Popeyes fried chicken for another 20 minutes on the podcast. So, what's your favorite thing on the menu? Uh, I like getting a two-piece dark meal with the mashed potatoes and gravy. And, uh, of course, the biscuit. You gotta get the honey. I, last the honey time, is key to the biscuits being fantastic. Last time I went there, they did not give me a honey. I had to go back inside and say, yo, homeboy. You know, you could just download it for free on your browser. He's looking down at the floor. Um, I would have to say I'm a pretty big simp for their chicken sandwich. I know it kind of got like super popular and a lot of publicity and was like super overhyped. But I genuinely like it. I mean, every time I go to Popeye's, if I'm not with a bunch of people getting a family meal, I end up just getting the chicken sandwich or almost every time. alone getting a family meal, you know what I'm saying? My problem with it is that it comes in that little insulated bag that makes the entire thing, um, I was gonna say damp, but I think it's more correct to say, uh, sweaty. The sandwich feels sweaty. I want a crispy, crunchy chicken sandwich. It's way too moist. That's because you live too far away. No, even when I ate it in the parking lot after I got it in the drive-thru, that shit was wet. So eat it inside. I, I think they just serve it that way. You know, when you I, ate it, was it fucking crunchy? You know what we should do, actually, for dinner? We should go to BK and try their chicken sandwich. I haven't tried that one yet, and I heard that it's basically the same because... They're it, owned by the same company, I think, yeah. Burger King and Popeyes. But, see, my question is, do they order from the same food processors, though? Like, do they get the same chicken uh, sandwiches? I don't think they do. But on the commercial, I know commercials are always misleading, but it looks amazing, and I would love to try it. I think I have tried it, and it was okay. I remember preferring the spicy oh, no. McDonald's not, sandwich. Not Burger King, I'm sorry, it was Hardee's. Hardee's? Hardee's came out with a new chicken sandwich, what? and it looks phenomenal. Where's the nearest Hardee's? There's no Hardee's around here. There's no Hardee's in Ames? No! Oh my... Dude, if there was a Hardee's in Ames, I would be eating there. There's oh no fucking Hardee's in Ames. Ames fucking sucks when it comes to food. You remember when you chose to move out here, you're like, yeah, I can I can live out in Ames because there's so much good food all over the place. Well, first of all, that is correct. And there, then There's Bebop's right next door. There's a movie theater across the street. There's Texas Roadhouse down the street, which... Uh, a little expensive yeah, for everyday eating. Yeah, but you have no Hardee's and you have no Popeye's. That's a deal breaker for me. There was a KFC right when I moved in and then they closed down, but I wasn't going to eat there anyway. But yeah, if they built well, they a Popeye's here... a monkey here, was moving in and they were like, we can't serve that much food. Are monkeys famous for eating fried chicken? Yes. Hmm, I'm going to have to dissect this joke a little bit. <laughs> So how was your trip to Rusty's now that we've picked our you know favorite what? Popeye's food? It was pretty great. Uh, I'm glad I went. Had a lot of fun. Got to meet some people I had not met in person before. Uh, Eggy, for one. Uh, I, I feel like in the, the brief, you know, half a week or so that I was hanging out with Eggy, we, we formed a spiritual bond. It might be because Rusty gave us all some psychedelic mushrooms and we <laughs> did those like three days in a row, which I do not think works. Um, let me say this, I don't know if I have deep fried my brain to the point where, uh, drugs no longer <laughs> affect it, but I feel like when you take mushrooms, you're supposed to, like, see things and, like, you know, rainbow vision and shit, but no, I just kind of felt like I was a little bit high. 
Like I just took a big, well, uh, maybe, big old smoke. Maybe like you've been saying all his years, you're, you're smarter than the alcohol and the drugs. No, I think I just deep fried my brain too much and now it does. Have you tried uh, any psychedelic drugs, Biggs? Pretty much to this extent, the, the only thing I haven't had is meth and heroin and I never <laughs> well, plan, yeah, don't do those. Never plan on doing either of those. Wait, so you've, you've eaten mushrooms before. Yeah. What did you feel? Because I'm wondering if maybe they were just bad or they just, I don't know why it did not work on me well, the way I was expecting. When I had those, I was playing Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think on, was it like PS3 or something? It was like a port of the original. And I guess I don't really really remember much of the effects of it. It just made the game way cooler. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's about the extent I remember of that. Well, maybe uh, I, I think I read somewhere that specifically with LSD, yeah, you can't do it multiple days in a row. Like you have to reset for a week. That was the one where I woke up on a neighbor's yard, like <laughs> three, three or four houses away. Yeah. Uh, in the just yeah naked in the yard. Almost, uh -oh. almost. I was in shorts and nothing else. <laughs> but I'm wondering if mushrooms are the same thing where since we did it three days in a row, it just had no effect the second two days and Aggie and I wasted Rusty's supply of mushrooms, <laughs> just kept eating them and nothing was happening. Yeah. I will say though, uh, to, to those youngins out there that have not tried these, um, obviously it would be hypocritical of me to say it's a bad thing to do, don't do it, because I have done it. Oh, I don't think it's what, a bad thing. What I will say is um, they're just not worth your time. There's a lot better things you can invest your time in that would be a lot more fun. No, I disagree. I think you know, if you're going to you know, do LSD or eat a mushroom or something... Uh, do it in the comfort of, you know, you're, you got to do it with be your... Be safe about yeah, it. When, yeah, do it when you're hanging out with friends in a safe environment and just know it's going to last a few hours. You don't have to ever do it again, right? And I'm not saying you should. I'm saying if you're interested and you have the availability, don't listen to Biggs. You should try it because maybe you'll really enjoy it. And if you have a panic attack, just know it'll be over eventually and you never have to do it again. Yeah, but then you hear that. And why would you even want to try it if you know it could give you panic attacks and stuff? Because it might also for, for me, awaken I'm just your, your inner third eye and you'll be like, Oh my God, I understand the secrets of the universe. I'm big, so I'm going to get naked and go lay awful. in my neighbor's yard. Yeah, exactly. For me, <laughs> for me, it's just the forewarning of maybe like, in the in the moment it's fine but the after effects always suck and it's just never worth it what do you mean after effects i like i didn't get a fucking mushroom hangover it's just me and eggy having fun hanging out i always out. feel like garbage when i'm coming down from anything like that that or i just pass out well we did it pretty late at night so yeah we just went to bed and woke up and like yeah, normal but no when i'm just sitting there and like slowly coming down from it it sucks <laughs> yeah that's why you got to sleep I don't know, man. Like, I mean, obviously you guys can do what you want, but my you, advice... You don't think people should at least try, if they're interested, they shouldn't try things I mean, if once? They're, if they're interested, they're going to try it once regardless of what I say. I'm yeah. just saying, if you're on the fence about it, it's just not worth it to me. From experience, I'm saying it's just not worth it. <laughs> well, just to be clear, doing drugs does not make you cool, and I'm not going to pretend that drugs are cool, but sometimes they can be fun. And that's the point I want to make. If you're hanging out with Aggie and you have a chance to do <laughs> drugs and get high with Aggie, you definitely should. And speaking of Aggie, Biggs, big announcement. Nobody's ever heard this one before. We were planning on doing Wheel of Cursed Meals 4 at the end of this month, but we've pushed it back a little bit because we're going to have a third contestant join us. I figure- Oh, thank God, that means I can eat less. Yeah, I think instead of five rounds each, we can all do four rounds instead. And in case the context clues were not enough, uh, obviously the third contestant joining us will be- Rusty Cage. Rusty Cage himself. He's flying in from Florida to hang out in the trailer park. He's super excited <laughs> to do it. He's going to leave his fucking mansion in Florida with no basement because you can't build a basement in a swamp. I don't know if you saw- Godzilla versus King Kong, but they had a in the middle of Florida fucking 50 stories deep basement makes no fucking sense um, But yeah Eggman is gonna join us and he will fucking crush us like there's no way we're gonna win Eggman is going Oh to yeah, he's gonna show up like prepared. He's gonna be 
high uh, high as a kite, able to eat whatever he wants. Oh yeah, I've I've seen this man in action. He can he can put so many drugs and so many drinks in his body and be completely unaffected that when it comes to what oh eat a, a booger sandwich oh uh, drink your mother's cum like he's gonna be doing this shit Whoa. so easily. For the record, <laughs> neither of those are on the wheel. I want to make that very sure. Your mom's cum is it's, not. On no, the wheel. no, definitely not. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited. Eggman's gonna come. We're gonna hit up the Iowa State Fair with him, uh, the day after while we're all, you know, re recovering from the wheel. And we're going to solidify what exactly will be on the wheel. I know we made a list, but Biggs and I are about to record a new episode of Mumkey's Mailbag, and a lot of fans have promised me that they're gonna send me all sorts of disgusting or horrendous things to put on the wheel. For example, somebody has been saying they're going to... Some, uh, one of our transgender fans was sending oh, us no. estrogen pills in the mail. And if I do receive those, they will be going on the wheel. Even though, it kind of seems like a cop-out. Because as funny as the idea of taking estrogen pills is... Yeah, you're not getting any instant effects Yeah, at all. like and it's, even, it's even... very... Visually, it's very easy to do. Just like swallow a pill on camera. Oh man. That is quite a hard pill to swallow if you know what yeah. I'm talking about. And like you and Eggy don't have to worry about growing tits. So really it's only bad for me. And realistically taking one dose isn't going to do anything to you. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we'll just take the estrogen pills for fun on this show. <laughs> now put them on the wheel. But the, the same <laughs> problem arises. There's no instant effects for any hey, funny it's content. Four Fun. You don't want to know what it feels like to be a woman all full of estrogen and, you know, having your period. I was raised by a single mother. I think I got enough of that experience. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> what, if, what if I take the estrogen pill? Suddenly I got these big double D fucking titties and I start having my period out of my asshole. You know, like, oh man. Oh, what a big difference. Blood coming out of my asshole. That's never happened every day of my life. You know what I'm saying, Biggs? <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> Well, is that what those are? <laughs> I thought I was just eating too much meat and it was bleeding out. No, no. Uh, I, that's not how it works? Shit. Uh, well, I guess you would uh, probably turn out looking like the the sex change monkey that they sent. What? <laughs> did, you, did you see? What? Did you see the pictures that somebody put like a filter on us? The woman filters? Oh, yeah. We were hot. So you'd probably look like that. I, I thought I, when you said sex change monkey, I thought like there was a news story that that <laughs> no, actually happened no. and I needed to hear more details because I got to meet this woman. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> if there's a if there's a monkey that got a sex change, I got to meet him or meet her, I guess. Well, Toot, hit him up. Toot's not a monkey. Smells like one. Oh, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> I just assumed they were somebody's gym partner. So we've we've roasted Heartsea, we've roasted Toot. Any other bridges we want to burn on this podcast? <laughs> um, you know, I haven't talked to Florian in a while. How's, how's Florian doing? Have you talked to him I recently? Haven't, I haven't talked to him in a while either. I think uh, Kino Corner is slowly replacing him on the Is It Kino podcast. Uh-oh. Speaking of which, uh, I think we should record an episode of Is It Kino because we just went and saw The Forever Purge, and it was very much based in... The, the conflict between white America and Latino America, and I think me and Biggs could very delicately handle that serious controversial issue as portrayed in the film. Yeah. So look forward it, to that, maybe. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> it was an interesting film, I'll, I'll say uh, that. <laughs> I, I think uh, a few of the points the filmmakers wanted to make came across in the exact opposite way. Yeah, I feel like uh, they were trying to... Uh, put out a good message, potentially, but it fell really flat, <laughs> and if anything, came off completely the yeah, wrong way. Yeah, it's very cringy. <clears throat> it was really bad to watch. It was hard to watch. So my 4th of July was fun. Uh, there was a hurricane, Hurricane Elsa. I don't know if you, you heard of this, Biggs. They was say, it really cold out there? Yeah, they said, uh, let it snow. No, they didn't say that. They said, let it rain. It was a storming, uh, you know, stormy Daniels the whole time I was down there, and... You know what, fans of Monkey and Biggs, you take this one to the bank, do not, and I repeat, first of all, Biggs, do you think I can trust our audience to keep a secret? No. Okay. 
I'm gonna. This is a secret between me and the Monkey and Big Show podcast fans. I really hope you guys do not spread this. Do not tell the the Trash Rats fans this because they will be very upset. But because it was constantly raining and storming out, uh, Rusty and I did not have the opportunity to box in his backyard. So what we're going to do on Trash Rats is. Uh, every week come up with a new excuse why like, we're gonna pretend that we did it but keep coming up with excuses why the video isn't ready yet and there is um, an old Game Grumps bit that I assume was a bit where they had I think Dan Harmon like the guy who made Community and Rick and Morty it was either him or the guy who voices Rick and Morty but they had him on the show but then uh, after they finished recording, Dan Harmon bumped the computer with his knee and he bumped it so hard with his knee that all the files were corrupted. So they're like, yeah, we just got to uncorrupt these files, man. But Dan Harmon, he kept, he kept bumping his knee into the computer. So, so I, don't, I don't know if that really happened or if they were just making a joke. But we're going to try to maintain a story as ridiculous as that. Like, uh, oh yeah, Emp Lemon, he, he corrupted the, the memory card uh, on the file, so we have to send the, the memory card into China so that they can decrypt de uh, all the, the computer files so we could finally, you know, make this video and then have, like, Kino Corner editing it. And he's like, oh yeah, we're putting in putting in 200 hours worth of film quality editing into this project. We're so excited. Um, but alas, and Biggs don't get horny when I say that, alas, it will not come to be. We did not get the opportunity to box. Very sad. Who were you rooting for in the Rusty vs. Monkey boxing match, Biggs? Uh, apparently the Hurricane. <sighs> and I was right. And if you are disappointed that Hurricane Elsa ruined the boxing match, I have three little words for you. Biggs, you care to guess? Uh, probably, um, uh, uh, I can't think of any other quotes from the movie. Let it go. Well, I was gonna make a joke and say a different quote from the movie, but I couldn't I'm think a of snowman! One. Is that what you were gonna say? Yeah. I'm Olaf! I'm a snowman! That's what you were gonna say? Really? Let's build a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? The cold doesn't really bother me anyway. Who? Nicole doesn't bother you? <laughs> the cold? Who's Nicole? Is that your girlfriend, Biggs? She doesn't bother you? Yeah. Uh, I asked the Patreon Discord for some questions. Should we just tackle those now? Now that you've told us all about your 4th of July? <sighs> yeah, I guess. That was a really good 4th of July story. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Popeye is ignoring me on Twitter. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, in case you don't know, I have a Patreon-exclusive Discord server where uh, me and Biggs were always in there chatting it up every single day. Biggs is very uh, frequent user of this Discord server. Everybody, you know, they, oh, look, Biggs is here again. I wonder what he's up to, just hey, chatting it up. I will say, people get pretty excited when I pop online for two seconds, even though I don't say anything in chat. <laughs> well, you, you should say more, because it makes me money. But I said, hey, we're going to do an episode of the podcast. If you have any questions, hit us up. And we got like a million questions, so I guess we'll go through some of these. Confish wants to know, I want Biggs's opinion on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure so far. So I guess I'll tune out for a little bit. So far? As in like, Are you what caught I've up? seen? I... I've watched all of the animated stuff. I'm on part six of the manga, I guess, but um, all of the animated stuff I really enjoyed. Like starting out with part one, it was kind of a, it was really slow and kind of hard to watch because I wasn't used to like the way Jojo is written and just the dynamics of all the characters was really hard to get into at first because if you haven't seen it, uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is a very flamboyant show. Um, you could almost say every character is gay. <laughs> so it's kind of like this show? Um, yeah, basically. But like, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to explain. You, you just have to watch it. But part one for me was really hard to watch at first. But once I got into it, I started to like it more. And then once I got to part two, it was off to the races. Like part two was so good compared to part one. Um, obviously I won't say any spoilers because I really want people to watch it but uh, it, it just keeps getting better from there and I, I guess the, the hard thing for me was after every part like 
it, it moves on from those characters and goes to new ones. So it's like a huge disconnect and you have to like kind of get back into like the flow of the new part because it it almost always changes paces because part one was really slow. Part two immediately kicks it off and it's like an amazing adventure. Part three starts slow and it's also like the longest part. So I don't know. It, it was a lot. Um, Does it get better when uh, Jojo and his friends go to Annie's lobby to rescue Robin? So anyways, um, yeah, I, I would probably, I hate to give things 10 out of 10s, okay? Because I feel like it's disingenuous. But this, I honestly would say, has like topped my favorites list of animes. Really? It, Best it, of all time? And it's honestly an anime that I don't think I'll ever experience anything else like it again. What? Like, I don't think I'll ever watch another anime and experience it like I did JoJo. Have you not seen the English dub of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? Bro, I Did have. you see the episode when they eat the fucking grilled cheese sandwich? It's just, it's a ride. And that's why I really want you to watch it, Monkey. You have to how, watch how it. How many episodes of the anime are there? There's like 155 total. We, we could anime. do that in a weekend. Okay, then let's do it. I would 100% re-binge it. Okay, we're going to do a second Kickstarter, also for half a million dollars. <laughs> if we hit it, I will binge watch JoJo with Biggs. And, I tell uh, you... Well, yeah. Well, no, this might, this is a way... Here's what we're going to do. This we'll is... watch one JoJo, then we'll watch one One Piece, and we'll go back and forth, and then we'll see which show finishes first, and then that'll be how we watch it. Oh, which one finishes first? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll just finish JoJo, and then I'll stop watching One Piece. But then... But, okay. But by then, you'll be a hundred some odd episodes into One Piece. You'll be so invested, you'll be right in the middle of fucking the Alabasta saga. You'll be like, oh, what is Vivi gonna do? Is Vivi gonna jump out of this clock tower? What's going on? This crocodile guy, okay, I really so, hope he doesn't get pushed up into the sky and exposed for the this shady character he really so is. So how many episodes is the actual One Piece that you want me to watch? Like the, the I don't want you to watch One Piece. I want you to read it. And I know you don't know how to read, which is the issue. <laughs> I read lots of issues. You have lots of issues. <laughs> you tell Heart of 115 has a question that even I was wondering. When will Biggs move in? Now, Biggs, you wouldn't know this, but I've been on this uh, this app called Zillow. You ever heard of this one? Yeah. I've been on the Zillow app looking at, you know, because there's really cheap housing in Iowa. You can get a fucking mansion for like a quarter million dollars. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, shit. You know, if I moved into one of these houses, there'd be enough room for Biggs to move in. Biggs probably wants to, you know, move into a better place. What if me and Biggs just got a house? It would be my mortgage. He would just pay me like four or five hundred dollars a month in rent. And we could just fucking, you know, do this show every day. Start streaming every From day the together. House. Fuck yeah, dude, you and that me. That used to be the dream back in the day for Twitch people, having streamer houses. Do you remember that? No. No, like, I wouldn't want to do that with like actual Twitch streamers because like, those people uh, are insufferable. Like FaZe Clan and all of them, that's how they got started was they all grouped up and bought houses together and they became streamer houses and they like did literal 24-7 streams like they'd switch off and stuff. It was kind of interesting at the time because we'd never seen anything like it but then it just kind of, like you said, got to be insufferable. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to hang out with those personalities all the time. But when I was at Rusty's house, like he, he had his friend uh, Trash Rat move in with him and help pay the rent and stuff. And I was thinking, well, fuck, if Rusty can do it, why not me and Biggs? What do you, what do you think, Biggs? You want to move out and move in with me into a an Iowa mansion? What's funny is this was actually a plan that uh, I had with Cobb back in the day before he abandoned us. Before he got a GF who wanted to live in Georgia. Um... So yeah, I mean, I'd probably be open to it. Obviously, nailing down a job is a must. I still can't believe I can't find anything in my field. It's pretty uh, depressing. Well, if um, you, if you think about it, if 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 it the bills are split between you and I, um, really, how much of a job would you need? Like we we probably make enough money just on YouTube to pay off the mortgage yeah but every until, month. until we built up more and like made more from it I would want a sustainable job at least on the well side. yeah you should definitely do that regardless but I'm just saying like we we could do this by the end of the year if we really wanted to because I as much as I like this house and I love my neighbor who is a complete nightmare um, 
<laughs> I I mean, I wouldn't mind finding a, a place maybe closer to like Ankeny or something so that, you know, Ames is a pretty far away from downtown Des Moines. It would be nice to have like a house in Ankeny or yeah. maybe just in Des Moines itself, hopefully in a place that's not too ghetto. Yeah, well, uh, you'd have to either live on the, the west side or... The west side. You'd have to live on the west side to not live in the ghetto. I would like to live in Easter Lake. That'd be cool. Either way, whatever house we find, it has to have a fucking basement. That's what I want. I want a basement so that I have room to buy an air hockey table. That's the dream, baby. And a baby. ping pong table. No, fuck ping pong. You like ping pong? Ping pong is so You're fun. You're gonna get that to play alone? Because I'm not playing that shit. Air hockey is, is the true game. Fuck your... People who just because you're not fucking, coordinated enough to hit a Tommy ball. Fucking Tommy C. Tommy C's like, oh, I gotta get pinball machines in my house. Fuck that. Air hockey. That's all you need. Air hockey table. Perfect. That's a smooth brain sport. No. Air you hockey's the to, best of them all. You have to have so much more coordination to play ping pong. Fuck coordination. Air, air hockey's hockey. fun. Well, you move your hand back and forth in like a yes. straight line. Yes. Oh, so fun. Yes. <laughs> In all actuality, I really love air hockey. The air hockey's fucking crap. awesome! <laughs> like, uh, we used to have this place called Loco Joe's on the south side oh, of the Oh shit, I forgot about that. It was an that. arcade. Yeah, my aunt, When did they close down? It was a long time ago, but my aunt, like, knew the, uh, the owners really well. She knew Loco and, Joe? And she worked there, too, so, like, we got free games and all sorts of stuff. We got, like, these little, like, tools that they put in the coin slots to get free plays. Uh, we got free food all the time. It was great. We would go there all the time. I feel like we'd be there at least once or twice every week. But twice I, a week? Yeah, yeah. Like we. Where was my invite? We basically lived there for a while. Oh bullshit. But um, but yeah, I played air hockey pretty much the most out of all of it. Well, I played pool too, but that was only when the tournaments were going on. I did pool tournaments back when Tim I was younger. Tim pool. But uh, yeah, air hockey was like my game for a long time. I loved playing it. So we agreed we're gonna we're gonna go half and half on a, a four bedroom house, four bedroom, uh, at least two bathroom, furnished basement, and then we're gonna put an air hockey table in the basement, and that's the that's the plan. By the end of 2021, probably do a like a home theater down there too. F yeah, dude. I mean, I I think we could, especially. Uh, I mean, if you find a job, man, and I'm making my YouTube money and shit, and maybe I I don't know. I think we could do it. I think it'd be pretty easy, actually, because I've been looking at Zillow, and you can get some pretty big houses for, like, $250,000, man. So it would be about as cheap as living here, to be honest. It looked like the monthly payments would be sub $1,000, split between multiple people. Fucking easy. <laughs> so fucking easy. And that's why, like, that's why Cobb and I had this idea a long time ago. Is like getting a house and splitting it two ways. That's like nothing. That's like an apartment, basically. Yeah, so, and my credit is so good. I think I could get that uh, that loan pretty easy, to be honest. Yeah. Well, plus, you know, banks are always out to get those first-time home buyers, so they'll. But I'm not a first any. time. I already have a house. I thought you did. You technically get a loan for this? No, I just bought it with cash. Yeah, so you haven't had a first home. Oh, uh, okay. So you'd be a first-time home loan buyer. I see. Okay. So they they're like sharks with uh, blood in the water when it comes to people. <laughs> they want to take advantage. A home loan yet. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, I mean, if you you know keep your your nose in the water looking for houses, let me know if you see anything. I'll keep looking. Maybe we'll find something good and snatch that deal. Sounds good to me. Uh, who uh, Toot wants to know, who would you put on your Mumkey and Biggs straw hat pirate crew? So if we were going to become pirates on the high seas, who would we want to be on our ship with us, Biggs? Like real people, I assume? Like friends? She did not specify. I'm going to just say it's a, it's a potpourri. Uh, real, fictional, anything. Who would you want to be on your crew? I'm gonna go with uh, Bond Clay so that well, we, we Bond Clay can transform into any girl I want and then, you know, go to Pound Town, baby. I don't care if it's technically gay, I'll go for it. Bond Clay is a gentleman and a scholar. I'm down to clown. Well, we need a mascot, right? So we'll probably need to take Patchy with us. Oh, uh, my brother? Yeah. Does that mean his uh, fiance has to come too? Well, yeah, that's probably assumed. Mm, that's rough. <laughs> I, I was gonna say no, she, no she girls can allowed. The kitchen, you know. Yeah, she but the whole point of food. Bond Clay was that Bond Clay can transform into women and then transform back into a man, so we don't have to put up with you know, feminine hijinks all the time. But if women have to go, I guess Patchy's fiance <clears throat> can come along. 
in, in that case, we might as well bring your mom. You yeah. know, get some yeah. uh, some eye candy I'm on the stay ship. Stay on the uh, the the JoJo fan boat, and I'll say I'm going to bring along uh, Joseph and Jotaro Josar. Both of those are fantastic characters, <laughs> and they would be great help on our uh, our adventures. If I have to steal somebody from these Straw Hat Pirates, I'm 100% going with Brooke. He's a 10-foot-tall skeleton who plays the violin and the piano. My two Free favorite. entertainment, bro. Yeah, like he's the musician. Like, Luffy wanted a musician so bad from the beginning. He got Brooke. I want to steal him from him. We're going to do a Davy Back fight. I'm taking Brooke. And uh, that'll be our mascot. He's a fucking skeleton, dude. And plus, with piano, an afro. Piano and violin are easily the best two instruments out there. So yeah, if I was friends with Brooke, I would not need to speak to Rusty Cage ever again because he's already a better musician than Rusty, and he's literally twice as tall. What more could you ask for? Well, I mean, a lot of people are probably twice as tall as you, at least. Yeah. Well, me and Rusty are the same height, so I don't know why I'm shitting on him. <laughs> Uh, and also Eggy. I mean, like I said, you know, me and Eggy, we got that that Sigma male bond energy well, plus, going on. Plus, I feel like every pirate crew needs the alcoholic, you know, fun guy <laughs> yes. who's constantly like blasted. <laughs> I don't even know Eggy, uh, so I apologize for no, lambasting him. But no, that's not said, lambasting. That sounds like him. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm telling you, Sigma male energy. Do you know what a Sigma male is, Biggs? I do not. It's it's Eggy. The the, the t- it's a it's like an alternate version of a Chad. It's the Chad who he doesn't have like, you know, he's not six foot eight with the big muscles and the fucking ripped uh, jawline and all the ladies love him. A Sigma male, uh, to my knowledge, is somebody who everybody wants to be friends with and all the women are attracted to like a Chad, but in the body of not a Chad. He, so had, he who, has Chad energy. What was that one uh, porn star dude's name? That, Ron Jeremy? That guy? That guy's a Sigma male, for sure. Okay, I was like trying to think of somebody to compare it to, and I remember that guy. Yeah. I was like, see that guy, I'm like, why is this guy so popular? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't He's got know. a big dick, dude. That's Sigma as fuck. <laughs> Well, I was talking more along personality-wise. Oh. Every clip I saw of him, like, just in interviews is like, I don't know, he seems kind of off. But Isn't he, didn't they have him cameo in the Crank movies? I think I so. I think some porn star did. Uh, Riley wants to know, do you guys have a favorite episode of the podcast so far? Uh, was it th- one year ago on the, the birthday episode, Bad Luck Birthday, that... Uh, we listened to the let's play of me and Patchy calling you a pedophile. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. That's your favorite one. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the first one that came to mind. I don't know if it's that good. Um, this show's really not good enough to have a favorite episode, is yeah, it? I don't know. I mean, there's there's some good parts like uh, me finally hearing the uh, the conclusion of the incel story. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess uh, you know what? It's dealer's choice on that one. Taylor wants to know, has Biggs ever been ratioed? Probably. I mean, <laughs> anything... Probably by me. Anything I've ever tweeted or anything, I get, like, maybe two likes. So, yeah, whenever you retweet and stuff or quote tweet, immediately ratioed. You should start replying to all my tweets just saying ratio and see if the fans, like, take your side, even if it's not a controversial <laughs> take. Like, hey, everybody had a good day today. Ratio. And you get, like, 100 more likes than me. <laughs> <laughs> you that should do it. That would be a good way to gain followers. <laughs> it, it would be funny. Or just like take the embarrassing image of me as a baby and reply to all my tweets with that and say ratio. I guarantee you'll ratio me every fucking time. <laughs> or when you photoshopped baby me's head onto an actual little monkey. That's that's the best <laughs> image to do it with. The face on the whole picture where I left the watermark on there. <laughs> yeah. I should do that, and then also like horribly uh, Photoshop the word ratio into the picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't do it, somebody else is going to now. So you better get on that. Uh, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Confish, another stupid question, but what do you guys think is the most Kino scene from Better Call Saul? Now I love Better Call Saul, but I have not watched it in a long time. I'm gonna say when the house burned down. That is very good. Yeah. When that uh, was fantastic. I, have, I actually have an answer for this, because I watched this scene multiple times, and it actually inspired me to become a fan of ABBA, but it's the flashback scene when Jimmy and Chuck 
are up on stage at the bar and they're singing. Oh, and they're the like, winner takes it all. I like that scene too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's probably my most rewatched scene. That's definitely Kino, especially when that scene comes right after Chuck fucking dies. Yeah. Oh man, so good. Uh, and I, the final season of Better Call Saul, I think, is coming out this year. So I'm going to have to binge rewatch that whole series. I know, right? I haven't watched it. Like, I think the last episode I saw was when the house burned down. Are you not caught up? No, no. There's like two whole seasons you haven't seen. Yeah. Oh, my God. We should watch those. But I don't know if we should start over or not. Maybe. Uh, toot again, who would you pick as a third guest from the Monkey and Biggs fan community after Heartsey and Toot? Well, we've already shit on them this episode, so who should we shit on now? <laughs> um. Uh. Hmm. Are any of our fans outspoken enough that we know their personality would be good on a show? I mean, there was a time a while back when you told uh, Reed that we would do a Nizakino over Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed. I don't remember and saying that. We never did that. When did I say that? I don't even know who Reed it, is. He has a clip of it. I don't know. Who the fuck know. is Reed? Have we, I talked to him before? Yeah, he's uh, one of my well, was one of my Discord admins. Uh oh. Um, but yeah, he's he's one of the the more like uh, Rick. I don't even know what word I was gonna say. Recurring Sigma person, male? like the 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 small group that I kind of formed on the Discord that we all kind of became good friends. Yeah. Uh, so I guess Reed, so we can talk about some shitty Scooby Doo movie. Well, you might actually like talking to Reed because uh, he also likes getting into political arguments. You think uh, with, I like that? With no end. I don't get into those. What are you talking about? <laughs> you like debating over it though. At least you would find fun in it. I do consider myself a master debater, Biggs. That is so. True. I could definitely see you two having some enjoyment and arguing back and forth over politics. <laughs> uh, I mean, the more I think about politics, the more I realize I don't have too many super solid opinions worth arguing about. Because it's not like I'm going to change anybody's mind, and honestly, my mind could easily be changed by any new information. So it just seems like a pointless endeavor. But he's a libertarian, so it could be really fun. I like, I mean, I, I would probably consider myself libertarian leaning, to be honest. I, you know, One Piece is a very libertarian story, Biggs. I think you would, uh, if you're into libertarian shit, you might like that. But, uh, hashtag not a furry says, how are things going? Like, are y'all doing okay, all things considered? I do not understand that at all. What do you mean, all things considered? What the fuck do you <laughs> think you know about our lives that, that you're concerned about us? Uh, well, you know, they could probably just mean, you know, the state of uh, just reality with COVID and everything. That shit's over! Is I mean, it not over? I mean, they they probably haven't asked us before, and maybe they're just curious now. Well, it just, it confuses me, because all the time on Twitter, I'll get private messages saying, Hey man, I hope you're doing okay. I know things have been rough. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, are you living in 2019? What the fuck? Everything is fine. <laughs> in fact, in, in a lot of ways, things have never been better for me. I don't know why everybody yeah. is so fucking concerned. I, uh, I have gotten quite a few Snapchat uh, messages from people just like really going out on these tangents of like, Biggs, I know you're struggling. And <laughs> I, I know things are just really hard and that you're just really sad, but you have to know that there's people out here that love you <laughs> and we're, we're here to support you. And, you know, I read it and I'm like, wow, this is a really nice message, but what are they talking about? It, like, I know I'm just genu like generally a sad person, but there's nothing like inherently wrong with my life yeah, right now. They're <laughs> trying to be kind and it comes across as insulting because it's like they're they're showing pity on us <laughs> for just living our normal lives. They feel they're, sorry for they're, us. They're, they're patronizing us. <laughs> yeah, it's like, if you want to patronize me, go to patreon.com slash monkey. I don't need this fucking DM bullshit trying to make me feel bad about being alive. <laughs> anyway. Um, Uh-oh, Biggs, here's a deep one. Oh, we're about to fucking, you know, go down memory lane, start crying, hugging each other, apologizing, all that jazz. You know, I did get a lot of screenshots into me of us hugging during one of the videos. <laughs> what video? Oh, it was, uh, in the podcast when I sat no. on your lap? No, was it that one? I think it was a personality one. I, I hugged you in when we watched our old high school video. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Because I was hugging you on screen, so then I did a double hug. 
But Random Candor says, how did y'all make up after the big deletion? How did Biggs reach out when you had your darkest times slash cancellation? Any tips for the youngins on here on the importance of stable platonic relationships? If you think this is platonic, you're not paying close attention. <laughs> Through your young adult lives, love you both. Biggs, how did we make up after the Biggs deletion, if you know what I'm saying, brother? Well, if I remember correctly, um, I was like the huge prick in the whole scenario because I kind of disconnected from you, but you were like continually reaching out because you had even messaged me afterwards. And I remember you saying like, you know, I am upset, but I still want to be your friend. Like we can still be friends after this and yeah at the end of the day the channel was i mean we had like eight views on each video it's not that big of a deal so like i don't know i felt and that that was also just not a, a great time for me at all i was working at a, a really crappy job they were screwing me over constantly was that old um, country buffet no that was uh high v <laughs> yeah the same place that screwed me out of like three weeks of vacation and all sorts of it was just a terrible time so honestly at that point I was so secluded and isolated I just wanted to like be alone anyways so I think I took that as an opportunity to just like cut everything off and I said fuck that you're not cutting shit brother we're, yeah. st we're still attached to the hip you're not you can't cut me off if you tried you could take a fucking uh, diamond plated machete you're not cutting a goddamn <laughs> monkey off your back yeah, that's, that's basically what happened, because he, <laughs> he would continually reach out, you know, and we would uh, stay in contact, and then um, he ended up moving away, but we still talked every now and then. It was never, like, an extended period where we just didn't talk. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, as soon as you came back, it's just like everything went back to how it was before. Yeah, I think I that's how... all the time. I don't know if that's how it works for women, but I think for most men... Like if you if you guys were bros, you guys were good friends. You could go ten years without speaking at all, and then as soon as you see him again, run up and fucking jump on his back and say, "What's up, you fat fuck?" You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like things never change. It's like it, it it never stopped. It just paused until it resumed. Basically, yeah. I think that's how. I mean, that's again, that's that's how Luffy is with his friends in One Piece. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he doesn't see Bon Clay for a bit. He runs back into him and impelled down. He's like, "Oh, what's up? What's up, Bon Clay, my my brother?" I haven't seen you in a hot minute, but hey, we're friends again, aren't we? And he's like, oh, fuck yeah, Luffy. Speaking of One Piece, I'm going to use that to answer this other question. How did Biggs uh, help during your darkest time slash cancellation? This is not going to make any sense to Biggs, but I'll just say, go, go read or watch the post-Marine Ford arc of One Piece. Pretend that I'm Luffy. Pretend that Biggs is Jean Bay, And it's, just, it's exactly the same in every way. <laughs> 100% exactly the same. Uh, uh, ho anyway. Hopefully that's a good story. You you do, I mean, you do kind of look like uh, Jean Bay, and I do kind of look like Monkey D. Luffy in that I am a monkey. So I think the comparison is apt. Uh, <laughs> Sir Red Edge says, how much does Biggs weigh now and what is his goal weight? Do you even I, know? I have no idea what I weigh now. Um, I, there, I was weighing myself there for a while back when I was doing that uh, weight loss thing at work and I did end up losing a decent amount, but it was not near what I had hoped. Uh, I guess my goal weight, I mean, honestly, even getting down to sub 200 would be great for me, <laughs> but that's going to be a, a long trek. And sub 200, that's smaller than like middle school bigs. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah, actually it is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, at least into the healthy range for my age and height would be amazing. Well, um, if we're going to pull height into this, we should both be like 120 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's going to be a long trek. I'm slowly losing uh, weight. I haven't put on any more, thankfully. It's true. Um, I, I often offer Biggs um, very unhealthy snacks and drinks, and he has been refusing them constantly. So I can tell he's, <laughs> he's I tempt him like the devil on his shoulder. He says, fuck you. So but, uh, it all works out. A lot of my clothes are starting to not fit, so the financial side of losing weight is coming close. You can donate. Have to you can donate to them to me to use as a blanket. <laughs> yeah, buy all new clothes soon. So I mean, I am I am happy with the progress I've made. I just really hope I stick with it and don't fail like I have before. <laughs> uh, as soon as you're one size down, I will reward you with a new blaze shirt in your new size that'll be you got to keep progressing to the smaller and smaller blaze shirts yeah this may sound like super cringe but there was a 
a time back when I was like a huge PewDiePie fan. I was like watching <laughs> every day. But like he released a bunch of different like uh, merch for like, you know, his hundred million when that hit and blah, blah, blah. I bought a few of the shirts in a size that I eventually want to be in. So that's like the goal. <laughs> if I can one day fit in those shirts, I'll be Your happy. goal is to wear a PewDiePie merch from 2013? Yes. <laughs> okay. You still have it in the plastic bag or is it faded? No, it's in the bag still. Well, speaking of things in the bag, Gozuma wants to know, Monkey Biggs, which of you has a bigger cock? If you don't know the real answer, speculate. Uh, I mean, Biggs has everything bigger than me, so I have to assume that's the same. Yeah, but you also have to look at it from this point of view, too. It's it's perspective of size. Everything about me is so big and that I'm so enlarged that that probably looks way smaller in comparison to everything it else. It doesn't matter how it looks. It matters <laughs> when, when you pull out the tape measure... I think the girth of your cock is going to be more than, like, my whole neck. <laughs> so I think you got me beat. Uh, that's my answer. Um, Lud wants to know, when will you take the monkey mask off? Uh, where have you been? He, he might have missed a few videos. <laughs> uh, Zach wants to know, what podcasts slash YouTube channels are you and Biggs fans of? I think I've talked about this a few times, but Biggs, you got anything new you've been watching? Um, so I never really watched podcasts before. It was never really something I, I like to do. Um, I, I mean, I guess you can kind of call it a podcast, but it's more so of like watching a game. But I like watching um, Critical Role, which is a D&D channel. And they uh, they have like a professional setup for their D&D games. So like there's cameras in all the people, there's cameras on the board, on the DM and everything. So I, I do listen to those in the background a lot. So it's kind of a podcast in a sense. Um, but then I have found myself watching some of uh, Rob Sesternino now on oh, my own. Really? What do you what do you watch from him? Just random Survivor videos. Like I don't know. Like and ranking then, all the seasons. And then and shit? sometimes I'll I'll watch um, News AF. Sometimes I'll oh, shit. tune into that. There you go. So but those I I picked up from monkey he watches those a lot oh yeah on the newest news af episode i looked in the comment section and they said who else is here from monkey and i was like oh i am <laughs> that's me <laughs> uh okay i'm gonna do i'm just gonna list off every podcast i listen to on a regular basis and give a brief description uh news af like big said <clears throat> uh it's rob sister nino tyson apostle both the very big uh, famous survivor guys but it's not about survivor it's just a comedy show about, uh, you know, the craziest news stories of the week. I listened to this Australian uh, comedian couple. It's a show called Big Soft BigSoftTitty.png. Um, and the way I found it was kind of weird. There was this, I guess there's a meme that is ridiculing the female host. Her name is uh, Demi. And I guess she did a stand-up bit on a TV show called... Um, dad's Google search history and I guess a lot of people on 4chan thought it was really cringy and they tried to force it into a meme and they were like harassing her online and just like relentlessly bullying her and that's how I found out about her and then I saw that she had a podcast so I thought okay I'll take a listen let's see how cringy this really is and it's just her and her boyfriend and they're fucking hilarious like it's genuinely very very funny nothing at all like the so called cringy stand up bit that she did and uh, the more and more I learn about uh, her history of mental illness and like how abusive her parents were, the more I feel terrible. Like, oh man, these people are really bullying this poor woman and she does not deserve this shit at all. <laughs> uh, that show was very funny and I really enjoy that. Um, I listened to the Flophouse podcast, which is just, uh, it's a very long running show from like 15 years ago, it's still going today, where they just uh, <laughs> watch a bad movie and then they make fun of it. And I think that's the main ones. I listened to Asterios' podcast still, uh, the loudest podcast. They recently started doing a One Piece segment, and I volunteered to join them next time they did it. And they said, not, not now, maybe later. So that was some cold, hard rejection right there, but I still listen to the show. And I think that's about it. Yeah, I guess the only other one I can think of is, again, D&D related. Um, it's a channel on YouTube called WebDM, and what they do is they take different aspects of the game and they'll break it down and kind of explain it because 
Uh, in all honesty, the player's handbook is kind of vague, and the DM's guide is really vague about a lot of things, and they, they really go into depth on it, so I found it pretty interesting. Is it funny? I mean, it can be. They're kind of goofy guys. <laughs> oh, and speaking of YouTube, because I forgot to answer that, I recently started watching, uh, I think his name is Simo, like C-I-M-O or something on YouTube. He does Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. And him and his friend are doing a series called the Progression Series, where they, like, they're going through the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and, like, opening all the different card packs in order of release and building new decks every week with them, and it's... It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, once they get into the cards I've never heard of before, I don't know if I'll still be invested, but right now they're I'm only in like the GX era, so it's still all the cards that I you know know and love from when me and Biggs played all the time. So that's great. If you like Yu-Gi-Oh, go watch the Progression series. Uh, Robel wants to know favorite movies that me and Biggs watched together. Recently, we rewatched a Serbian film. I had not seen it in a couple of years, and it still holds up pretty well. I think. I was very surprised to find out that uh, that Monkey's dad had seen this film. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. We did a <laughs> podcast, and somebody found the podcast. I thought it was gone forever, and somebody found it. <clears throat> yeah, so that was interesting. Um. I don't know. Uh, what other movies have we really watched together recently? Uh, I mean, a Serbian film is the main one. I think all of our underage fans would love to go watch a Serbian film, perhaps even with their own fathers. I think The movie is top secret. <laughs> uh, that's a movie every young man should watch with his dad, I think. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only other movie I can think of that we went and saw somewhat recently, other than The Forever Purge, was uh, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, which was... Completely forgettable. Yeah. Not good. Kind of a throwaway film. Yep. We, I saw that with you? <laughs> I think so. I don't remember. <laughs> I guess I did. I don't... Pretty sure we went yeah, to that. Completely forgettable. Are there any movies that we both have just watched a bunch of times together that we both really like? Other than Donnie Darko, obviously. Because we've seen that together at least 40 times. I, I don't think we really watch that many movies, to be honest. Like, we'll watch one every now and then. Like, we were on the train of watching all the Jake movies, but that kind of stopped. Um, I got a little bored watching... Uh, Brokeback <laughs> Mountain, to be honest. Is that Let's watch something else. I think I fell asleep during that one. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, I think we're over time, so I'll find one more question. Uh, let's see, what are... Uh, out of all the artistic endeavors either of you have created, which one would you say has been the most personal? What is your most personal piece of art, Biggs? Like any form of art? Yeah, that you've made. Would it be that rock opera that you and Todd made? I don't know, man. I don't... I guess I don't really create that much stuff. Like other, I don't think I would really call D and D campaigns art. So like the last thing I created that would be considered art to most people would be like the book I wrote in creative writing in, in what senior year. <laughs> yeah, when you were seventeen. So uh, I don't know. I I don't really know how to answer that question. <laughs> I mean, I guess this podcast would be the most personal because we just talk about your life. <laughs> True. It's probably pretty close. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'd probably also just go with the book I wrote when I was a teenager. Uh, the Triflers, I've talked about that plenty, though. People know all about that. But that was uh, that was probably too personal at the time. And I have not read it in like five years. But I feel like um, when I do eventually reread it and maybe make some videos about it, I think I will be surprised to see that I no longer relate to a lot of uh, what's in there. I think I've... I, feel like, I think I've grown up a little bit. Yeah, I feel like we could even say that now, that we don't really relate to much of what we were in high school. <laughs> but I think, and I was reading a thread on Twitter about this, I don't know if it's true, but they, they're saying that like the frontal cortex or something of your brain doesn't even finish developing until you're 25. So that's why so many people, um, like in their early 20s, will they might feel like they don't know their place in the world and they're really you know, worried about who they are as a person. And then when you turn like 24, 25, 26, a lot of people find a sense of calm and like a, a deeper understanding of who they are. And I was reading that like, oh, yeah, I guess that's kind of true. I feel like a very different person from who I was at 20 and 22 and 24. Yeah, 
I guess I guess that's fair. Although Biggs, you've been the same person since you were twelve, so I guess yeah. <laughs> maybe you you developed was, very early. I was gonna say like, I feel like since high school at least I've become less calloused. I I would say to most things, like. Obviously, things don't really get to me still. Like, I don't really care about, you know, people making fun of me and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking more of, like, connecting with people on, like, a deeper level. I feel like I do a lot better now. Whereas back then it was, oh, this person's cool. I guess I'll hang out with them. And that's all I, that's all that it is. Just hanging out with a person, not really getting to know them, blah, blah, blah. So I guess that has at least changed since then. Because not that those personality tests really matter in any sense but i remember taking one back in the day and i got i think it was like the the architect or something it's like they're basically like these not really cold-hearted but they're like more disconnected and they're like more logical thinkers versus now supposedly like even on that thing i'm like the helper yeah we both got nines more of like feelers now yeah so i guess i've i've turned into more of a human and less of a robot which i would say is a good thing yeah so if you're listening at home and uh you feel unstable in life and you don't know who you are uh look at your birth certificate if you are uh if you're younger than 25 just give it a few years you'll probably figure shit out i think most of us have and another thing most people our age probably have like a kid by now i mean maybe not these days but historically and i'm guessing that matures you and grows you up really fucking fast too so i imagine if we had kids we'd also be like much more mature people than we used to be yeah i mean there's a ton of people i know that either got married at 18 or got married like 18 early 20s fuck and had kids by like now like, yeah, my parents did. My parents had me when they were 22. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Fuck that. My mom always said that. She's like, oh, man, I waited too long to have kids. I had you when I was 28. And I'm like, 28? <laughs> mom, I'm almost 28. I don't yeah. even have a girlfriend. I'll be lucky to be married by <laughs> oh, 40, mom. So it's like, dang, like, is having kids in your 30s really that bad of an idea? I don't I don't think it is. I mean, you're going to be one of the older parents, but who cares? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'd be way better uh, mentally stable in my 30s to have a kid than I am now. Are you actually planning on having a kid? I mean, I would like to have kids eventually. Okay, good, because I'm not doing it, and I I don't know if my brother's gonna pump out a kid. So if I'm gonna be like the the monkey uncle, you might be my best bet. <laughs> I don't know if my brother can afford to have a child, and I really yeah. hope he doesn't do it anytime I, soon. I don't know. I, not to go on another tangent since we're over time, but like. I feel like my idea or what I want to do at this point is to have one biological and then uh, potentially foster another one. Of which race? That Important to know. That doesn't matter uh, no, to me. No, it matters. I'm already going to have a, a Mexican baby, so that's like... I already have a minority. What am I going mean, to do? If you hook up get with a, a white baby? Well, if you hook up with a white chick, maybe your uh, kid that's could... Probably maybe your kid could pass as white, because you pass as white. And if we, if we dilute that Mexicanism even more, maybe that baby has a chance to be successful in life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, thanks for tuning in to the Mumkey and Big Show. I've been Mumkey. Could I get two scratches oh my, from my homeboy? It's Jesus. not funny anymore. <laughs> Better give him one more dance. Now, baby, slide on the pole, baby, dance. Now, baby, show me who you're working for. I'm just going to fade it out as I'm singing. <laughs> you should fade it out while you say that. <laughs> <laughs>